And away we go. It's the DFS Other Bird presented by Osmo.com. Dan Strafford and Joey Corman along with you on this Tuesday morning. Getting ready for a six-game NBA slate. Joey, how the hell are you doing? Doing pretty well, Dan. Just uh, catching that Clemson LSU game. It should be a great second half currently. When I when I when I went uh, to start this podcast, it was twenty one seventeen. So uh, pretty explosive game. It's one. It's gonna be one of the better championship games I think we're gonna see in recent memory. Yeah, Trevor Lawrence and uh, that that guy uh, Burrow over there, pretty damn good at football. Should see some. Uh, I didn't say Joey Lawrence. Did I say Trevor Lawrence? Right. You said that, Trevor I, Lawrence. Okay, you did, good. You said it. Because you your name, like coming into this, I knew there would be a bad reference in there if I went Joey Lawrence. I'm happy Trevor Lawrence came out first, but well, at least I'm old enough to remember who Joey Lawrence is. That's, that's fair. So. I'm I'm sad to say I do, uh, but yeah. nonetheless, uh, we do have these six games on tap. As uh, Joey and I were talking before we started recording, not uh, a ton of lines out as of yet. Game still ongoing in the National Basketball Association here on Monday night. We have lines for Houston, Memphis, and Phoenix, Atlanta. We do have spreads on all the games, but not to over-unders as of yet. Plenty of injury news to get through. We're going to go game by game on this year podcast, give you an idea of where we're looking in each every contest. Don't forget, NBA Strategy Show is available for you bright and early on Tuesday morning. Then, of course, you have the Deeper Dive and Live Before Lock, our free uh, YouTube shows over there. If you want to get behind the paywall, Osmo. Dot com For more details, always check out Osmo underscore com over there on Twitter. I'll have more on Yahoo DFS later on. Joey, we start with Utah and Brooklyn again. No over under on this one. Seeing a minus one uh, in favor of the Jazz as of right now on the road against the Brooklyn Nets. We do get Kyrie Irving back from the weekend. He came back and played very well on Sunday. Shook uh, the rust off pretty easily uh, to put up, what was it, uh, 20-something points, uh, a decent DK outing of 32 points coming back. Price point was high enough that you probably didn't play him, but now that price point drops on this six-game slate to 8,600 against Utah. Spencer Dinwiddie does carry a Q tag, but that's uh, probably uh, – sorry, that's Donovan Mitchell, not Dinwiddie. Donovan Mitchell has a Q tag with uh, an illness, but he should be ready to go. He is probable. That is the major injury news in this one uh, outside of your typical Mike Conley Uh, missing yet uh, another game with a hamstring issue should be out uh, for a bit here as he rolls on. So Joey, as you look at this one, Gobert seems overpriced simply because he doesn't give you enough scoring upside, right? I I know the peripherals are there rebounds are there. And I know the Nets front court gives it up a bit, but 9,200 on this slate seems a bit too rich for me for Rudy Gobert. Do you see anybody pop off the page from this contest or, or how do you see this one playing out in your estimation of what names you think might be at least intriguing uh, in this matchup. Yeah, Dan, uh, this likely won't be a very popular game for for uh, DFSers to target on a uh, short slate. So Kyrie Irving, you know, you don't know where those minutes are going to be. I don't know if they've announced a minutes limit on him yet. Haven't seen one. Nine, no. Nothing. So he got twenty. He had twenty minutes last game. You're not going to get a full complement of Kyrie Irving. I wouldn't. I wouldn't think so. So at eight thousand dollars, I doubt he can hit you know the the value you're looking for against against Utah if if I'm looking at Utah it's going to be in the point guard position Rudy Gobert I agree with you completely overpriced so Mitchell obviously that question questionable tag I'm not completely sure how serious that is whether that's just a you know um it's for, for, yeah, illness from over the weekend so he should illness be over the weekend okay so you know, Mitch, Mitchell is gonna would be the premier option I would look for at this position just because Brooklyn has struggled so much against the point guard position. Other than that, it's really hard for me to see anybody I would specifically be targeting from this game. The guy I want to at least mention, throw throw the name out there, is uh, Jordan Clarkson. This is a guy who uh, can score in bunches and uh, point guard, shooting guard, maybe lead guard, whatever way you want to refer to Jordan Clarkson. I don't know if he's necessarily a facilitator uh, in this NBA, but – He's a guy that I think has an opportunity here in, you know, 26 to 34 minutes, what you've seen the past few games out. He's getting staggered a little bit off of Donovan Mitchell uh, when they play together. When uh, Mitchell is out, obviously that boosts the usage there for Jordan Clarkson. But I think even with Mitchell back in, uh, this is a spot where Clarkson playing with that second unit against this Nets team at 5,600 could be a viable piece uh, on this slate. So I agree. Don't think there's a ton here. Don't think there's a lot to love, but, 
I'd yeah. keep uh, Mitchell Clarkson back pocket. And I wouldn't mind taking a, a longer look at someone like Jaron Allen. I know it's against Gobert, but he's cheap enough uh, that I think at center, that could be an interesting depending on how it all shakes out elsewhere. Let's roll on Phoenix and Atlanta. You have a Q tag for Trey young. And obviously that's huge, Joey, where it has ramifications both, you know, in this contest itself, but, uh, for Atlanta, but also just on this game overall against Phoenix. This game does not yet have a line either. Uh, well, one book does have it. Don't know how trustworthy, but 224 and a half over under uh, minus three in favor of Phoenix. Uh, we will no minus three. Let me see. Double check that. All right. I'll double check that in a moment, but um, the, the line moved as I was reading the page. So I always uh, question that as it happens. But uh, if you look through Trey Young, being out, say he's out with his hamstrings against this Phoenix front court. They do have DeAndre Ayton, but not necessarily the greatest front court in the world from a defensive standpoint when it comes uh, to the Phoenix Suns. Looking here, they're a bottom 10 team when it comes to points in the paint uh, for uh, Phoenix. And then for Atlanta, points in the paint, the Hawks are last or are bottom. They're, they're 30th overall in opponent, opponent points in the paint. On the other side, DeAndre Ayton jumps off the page. At 7,800, yeah. you could probably make a case for Aaron Baines even in a backup role with this front court for Atlanta. What do you make of this contest, and where do you see yourself leaning most heavily? Yeah, so so before getting to this, I just want to say Donovan Mitchell has been upgraded to probable. There you so, go. You're going to see maybe Damian Jones get the start. Uh, he's gotten some starts earlier in the season. He's priced at 3,500 on DraftKings. So he – uh, he, he's had some mildly productive games. He played a game against Phoenix earlier this season. He put up 30 – nope, he put up – he was 3,500. He put up 29 points in a blowout against Phoenix earlier this season. He's had some games in the mid to upper 20, so he'll definitely be worth a look. He's kind of fallen out of the rotation lately, so I don't think – he's not like a plug-and-play. He easily just only end up playing 12 minutes, and they go small, but against Aiden and Baines – uh, I wouldn't expect them to do that. You, you, have, you have Collins there at 8,300. He's had he's been inconsistent without Trey Young in the lineup. He was a really popular play against Brooklyn last game, and he completely busted 23 and a half points. Then again, he went off against Houston and and Washington in back to back games for 45 plus. So he he's definitely going to be worth a serious look, regardless if Trey Young is out. I, I think he could still have a really really productive game there. And uh, it should be noted, and something I've taken with Atlanta, is Atlanta at home is a different team than Atlanta on the road. They have been a disaster on the road and have had a real difficulty staying in, staying in games. But at home, they seem to uh, be a little more competitive. In It will be interesting to see uh, what, let's say, Trae Young is out, because I think that's really where you're looking at the value there. I think the only way you're targeting Atlanta besides Trey Young and John Collins and maybe Kevin Herter is if Trey Young is out. So I would maybe look to Brandon Goodwin being a little post hype sleeper. I mean, everyone might be down on him after he kind of only put up 20 points in that, in that game against Brooklyn. Uh, Cam Reddish might be a little too over owned. He had a big game against Brooklyn in that blowout, but he just has not been good this year. He's, he's not a good, he's very not a good baseball player. I've, I've seen him play a couple times and it's just been pretty brutal. And every, every single time he has a big game, he seems to, he seems to, you know, he had a 44 point game against Brooklyn and then he had a eight point game against Charlotte. So, I mean, good luck trying to figure out if Cam Reddish, you know, he's, he's a lot of, a lot of his value comes from steals and, and stuff like that. So it's, he's a little unpredictable. The Andre Hunter has been completely irrelevant. Uh, I, I mean, Atlanta can't feel good about these rookies right now. Um, I mean, 3.7 points last game, DeAndre Hunter. I mean, come on. Like, really? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? He's, he's like, he's channeling his inner Tony Snell. Like, what's going on there? Well, uh, Snell played yeah. defense. Um, yes, he does. You know. the, the, uh, I do think you, you pointed to Collins, the erratic uh, play without Trey Young in there. I do think the talent upside. I think this, this game sort of uh, screams ownership. If you're getting players at low ownership values that you think they have enough upside, with Trey Young off the floor or Collins or maybe another piece for the Atlanta Hawks. Uh, I do think though, DeAndre Ayton at 7,800 is somebody that is going to be tough for me to avoid uh, a lot here. Um, but I, I do think that there are other center and big man options that maybe we'll talk about as this uh, podcast goes on. But I do think that's an intriguing yeah. one and here. Pretty. I will pretty say sure. you can never go wrong picking a center against Atlanta. Right. 
They are I, last two weeks against centers. It's been uh, it's been well, they've been they've been a little better. It was, oh, that's the full season. I'm sorry. The last two weeks, especially because they're so beat up down low, averaging 59.3 points centers are against Atlanta. Yeah, I mean, and then of all of the DFS versus position or a point versus position center makes the most sense to, to cite. I, I, the points in the paint is a huge number. It, yep. The rebound rate, all of it uh, points to Atlanta being a very good matchup. And, and Aiton is talented. We know he's been erratic. We know the suspension. Uh, but this is a, a big upside spot for him where if he's getting 30-plus minutes, I think it's a, a pretty – Pretty easy lock and load, and I would assume a lot of DFS would agree there. So you'll probably see pretty high ownership on Aiton uh, in yep. this matchup. Let's uh, continue to Knicks and Bucks, and oh, this boy. is going to be a fun one. Uh, there. Oh boy! <laughs> because we don't we don't like to talk blowouts when when predicting DFS. Because one, Vegas has their lines, and we try to use them for what we can. But also, crazy things happen. Also, typically in these games, the stars get theirs. Even in three quarters, you, you get enough out of them because there's a reason the blowout happened. And, and typically that's because of James Harden or LeBron or because of Russ Westbrook or because of Giannis. But this seems like one of those games where Giannis may be able to really take the foot off the pedal, let his team at home with a 16-point uh, uh, favorite here could be a huge – first half and then see a lot of the backups this feels like a game where if you're playing uh with some mme you're going to be talking about some of these extra uh bench players like an ursan Ilyasova or uh a west matthews or somebody coming off the bench and playing 20 to 24 minutes that you haven't seen in a while and having some upside but before we get down that rabbit hole do you agree is this a game that Maybe overall you try to stay away from, maybe there's one or two pieces from a value perspective you, you see upside in. And yeah, it's kind of hard to not say this is going to be a blowout. I, I think, you know, if you flip a coin, uh, it's probably about 50-50 if this game stays within 15. I mean, what do you say the spread was 16? 16, yeah. So, yeah, it, so basically you're flipping a coin for whether this game is completely out of hand, right? Uh, at least that's what Vegas says. So I would – trend more towards if I'm going to play it. I, I Giannis, you know, they haven't really loved uh, He's 12,200 on DraftKings, which is a real lot. Uh, I don't like him in this spot, especially because they haven't really been giving him a ton of heavy minutes and they likely won't if the game gets out of hand. I, I would be, I agree with you in that looking more towards the Ilyasova types and the maybe Sterling Brown. He had a big game last game. Um, if you want to play this game, other than that, uh, another name to keep an eye on is Bobby Portis. Bobby Portis has played, other than when he started for Randall, has played really well in blowout situations for the Knicks. Mm -hmm. So he could be a – I don't know if his price got back down. His price got back down to 4500 So he is not completely off the radar. I mean, I don't think you're taking a look at Randall or Alfred Payton or, or Barrett because I just – it's just hard to see that they you're, you're risking too much that they actually stay in this game. The one name I'd point, well, one, I do want to point out Marcus Moore senior is out. So he's continuing with those next spasms. So use that for what you will. He's been probably amazingly the best Nick on the entirety of the season. Julius Randall has been playing much better over the past month or so. Uh, but Reggie Bullock, uh, who does have a, a Q tag, he is probable to play. He's been dealing with this thigh bruise. And if I'm reading, nba.com correctly the bucks while one of the better defensive teams do give up a decent amount of three-point shots do give up a decent amount of three-point makes and so if you want to throw a dart at somebody in this contest reggie bullock has been taking a number of threes since he's come back he's been playing upwards of 28 minutes now the thigh bruise is enough of concern the blowout is enough of a concern but at sub 5k i think it gives you enough flexibility to to maybe be another asset when you're making your player pool. I don't know if Reggie Bullock's the guy I want to stake my lineups on on Tuesday night. Uh, but again, from just trying to find a player or two in each of these games to see some upside from Bullock, somebody in, in research before recording, I thought was at least intriguing. Yeah. Um, Bullock is an option for sure because he is a three point shooter. Another guy I just, just saw on the, the Knicks is potentially Damian Dotson. The last two blowout games, he's had 21 minutes and 18 minutes. So if, he is a three-point shooter. He's had games where he's hit three three-pointers. He had a five three-pointer game. So 
you know, if he gets some really garbage time there, he's someone to throw in there. I'm, I'm not saying you want to lock in Damian Dotson, but if you're like, I got your hand in your lineup and I got 3,200 left, maybe give Dotson a shot. So uh, that's what I'm taking away from this game. It's hard to like much. Um, I think we both agree on that. Yep. And uh, you want to get really crazy. Wayne Ellington's 3,100 and could get some garbage time run. Oh, and... let's go. Wayne Ellington. All right. I there. forgot he was in the league still. Yep. He's yes. uh, one of one of the many swing slash power forwards that the Knicks signed in the offseason that made absolutely no sense. But they, uh, nothing they do makes sense. Let's try to, the, <laughs> nothing they do. They have 18 power forwards. That is very true. It's been uh, my line all year. They've been uh, pretty uh, crazy to watch, and some people thought they might actually make the playoffs. So there you have it. I know the East is bad and all, but do those I, people do those people bet? Like, are they I, available to be to bet with? To bet those against? People? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure they are. Um, yeah. I, I will find some. I have enough Nick friend, uh, Nick fan friends. I'm I'm a Nick oh. fan. At least I grew up one. I don't know how right. much longer that's going to last at this point. <laughs> um, Houston and Memphis is up next. A contest. That we do have a over under four and a line. Uh, 238 is the over under I'm seeing. And I've talked to Lafayette a bunch. I've talked to Adam about this. Memphis is still a team along with Utah where I look at that name and say, well, this is a slow pace, grind them out team. Obviously, that is not who Memphis is anymore. They are third or fourth in pace, Houston second in pace. This is going to be an up and down affair. Russell Westbrook is out. Uh, so this will be a rest game for Russ. And that gives us James Harden as the obvious go-to knockdown, drag-out offensive star of this game. And it gives us a little bit of hope that Eric Gordon might give us some upside at 4,800, probably being inserted into the starting lineup for the Houston Rockets. But we start with James Harden, $13,000 to play the beard on this slate. We talked about Giannis a bit, maybe the hesitation because of the blowout factor. We talked about a guy like Rudy Gobert, whose price point is elevated. This is an elevated price point for James Harden. I, I think that's legitimate. We've seen him over 13 in the past, but this is a guy who has all the upside in the world, doesn't have rust in this contest. It's going to be high-paced. They're projecting near 240. Is 13K too much, or do you think you'll find yourself rostering Harden more often than not? 13K is a bit pricey. I mean, they're really going to make you pay to pick Harden. Uh, it's... You know, it, it's going to be whether you can afford harder or not. It's going to rely on uh, the amount of injuries we see and the, the value that opens up during the slate. It's too hard, I think, for me to say. I mean, thirteen hundred even without Russ is too hefty of a price. If everything stays status quo and we're not, we don't have a ton of low price value, then I, I won't be paying thirteen hundred. But if, if you know, or thirteen thousand. But if something opens up, there's some late injuries. Trey Young ends up sitting. You know, you got. Uh, Rubio is questionable, so you might have some value there. If stuff opens up there, then more than yeah, Harden's going to go for you know Harden's going to go for sixty to sixty-five at least. At yeah, least. The, the floor the floor is projectable here, and which is yeah. a nice thing to have. And I think you're right, and we are taking this game by game, so we're not necessarily seeing the totality of the slate as of yet. We'll do that at the end, but I do think it's a a, a spot where ownership will play so much of a role if you're getting. Harden sub 10% owned because of this price point and because value doesn't open up, you start trying to figure that out. You start trying to figure out exactly how you can make that work in your lineup construction and where you might lean. Taking Harden out of the mix, we know he's great. We know he has tons of upside price point uh, notwithstanding. Where else do you see yourself going? I, meant, I mentioned Eric Gordon. Uh, obviously, you have Morant here at 7,600, has shown some big flashes of upside, but hasn't really pieced it all together to be completely consistent uh joe val's had some upside clint capella for houston there are pieces here obviously because it's going to be a high scoring game there are going to be a ton of shots there are going to be a ton of three pointers taken which means there are a ton of rebounds what do you got as other pieces in this contest as far as you think are being viable yeah so we, we've already have announced eric gordon as a starter and ben mclemore as a starter so mclemore has been really really good when he's been in the starting lineup he's averaging 27 points per game as a starter. I, I know one of those, he had a monster game without Harden in there. So maybe you can lower that. Even if you lower that a little bit, you say maybe like 24 points. That's still amazing value. 3,500 on DraftKings. And uh, this, this is a Macklemore revenge game, I think, right? He played for Memphis. Could we, could we Mac, I think he has multiple revenge games. So I think that he's negates, got a lot of them. It, it negates we the can fact that it's not a Macklemore revenge game. Maybe. So 
Uh, yeah, Macklemore is going to be chalk. Eric Gordon will be popular. Uh, and Capella. Capella gets a huge boost. Memphis has really struggled against uh, points in the paint and uh, the center position. So Capella gets a huge boost without Russell Westbrook, you know, going and taking all those rebounds from him. Yeah, let's see. What do we got from uh, Memphis? The Grizzlies are mid-tier when it comes to point opponent points in the paint, but I think the idea of the rebounds and rebounds uh, being available for Capella, obviously the pick and roll specifically between Harden and Capella gets even more uh, run here with uh, Russell Westbrook off the floor. And I'm going to, I'm going to try to find a way to get Harden into as many lineups as I can on Tuesday night. I I think the price point is awful, uh, but it's going to be fun to at least see Tuesday during the day, what sort of hellish landscape of value I need to scrape together uh, to try to get Harden into my lineups as often as I can. But that's half the fun of DFS, right? Joe is, is seeing what craptacular players you can jam into a lineup trying to make uh, the expensive guys work. Yeah, that, that's, part, that's part of the fun until they end up going for seven points. And right, that's so fun, exactly. Right? exactly. <laughs> until they are who we thought they were. Until as, we are uh, who they thought they were. Yeah. I, 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 I have a laundry it. list, a laundry list of just – of just guys in my DFS graveyard who I'm just like, you know, that Billy, the Ben, Billy Madison, they're just, oh, Steve Buscemi is just crossing off the, yes. crossing off his, his hate, his kill so, list or whatever it is. It's, it's funny. You meant I've uh, many times over been told I look like Buscemi. So I've had that oh. uh, GIF oh. sent to me in the past as, and uh, as, as me being him crossing DFS people's <laughs> names off a list. So, well, well, there you go. Well, I you think it's full too, circle. There it is. Um, I will say, I think this game is going to be a a lot of fun to watch. So if you are a casual DFS player and you're looking for a game to focus on for the night, this is one to roster, not saying a game stack, but there are going to be a lot of pieces in this one that are going to give you a lot of uh, opportunity to have some high upside. So if you are just looking for one to lock in on and enjoy for the night, uh, this will be 8 p.m. Eastern tip. Houston and Memphis will be a huge one. Again, don't forget NBA strategy show is uh, bright and early on Tuesday morning. Josh Engelman with your host, and you get a rotation of Adam and Lawfee each and every day. You get some other surprise guests from time to time They're in. You get uh, the deeper dive at 5 p.m. That's Lawfee and Adam, and then live before lock, which is typically Spags or Josh. Uh, you get uh, some other pieces, Fast Eddie Fear in there. Emac is on there as well from time to time. So check all of those out for free. Don't forget hit that uh, subscribe button, hit the like button, hit uh, the comments as well. Let us know uh, about this show and others as always. And be sure to uh, check out Osmo.com for all of our offerings. I will remind you that we're brought to you in part by Yahoo DFS. Yahoo has uh, the baller tournament, uh, which is available to you throughout the NFL season now available as well uh, for NBA. You can check them out. You can also use the promo code Osmo to get you 30 Yahoo sports reward points. And uh, that is usable within those contests as well. So check that out throughout your day of DFSing over on Yahoo sports. And uh, thanks as always to Yahoo for sponsoring the DFS early bird up next. Another potential blowout game though. Paul George is out. He's out for, I think was this his third or fourth game in a row with that hamstring issue that he's been dealing with. Uh, This has been, and on again, off again, uh, trouble for George has kept him out for a few games in a row. But uh, checking most recent updated odds, see this one at minus 14 and a half uh, in favor of the LA Clippers, even with George on the shelf. Clearly, Cleveland, not a very good team, but there are some pieces here that might be intriguing in this specific matchup. Kawhi is 10K. Lou Williams, uh, I believe last time out, was reinserted into the starting lineup for the Clips ahead of Landry Shamet. Uh, So you have Lou Will now part of the lineup, which is, I would say, a a negative if Paul George were still in the starting lineup as well. But with George off the floor, Lou Williams, your clear number two scorer out there with Kawhi. So not as big a ding as you might see if he's number three behind George and Leonard themselves, but in the starting lineup. You have Montrezl Harrell, who I think has some big upside here against Tristan Thompson and this weaker Cleveland Cavaliers front court. What do you like? Are, are there some names here that you think are on the higher end of the price spectrum, but are in good spots? Or do you think this is a game that again, could be a little bit gnarly and, and look at uh, maybe staying away from this one? 
Yeah, it's going to be a tough game to play. I, a lot of it, you know, Cleveland's playing in uh, at the Lakers tonight. So a lot of it, I mean, if they if they can stay in the game against the Lakers, I doubt they can play the two LA teams close back to back. So um, a, a lot will depend on what happens with Cleveland tonight. I, I've talked about this on the podcast before. I do not like playing players who have a good game in the first half of the back to back, and and a, I just don't like doing it. So uh, I won't be playing, you know, if Kevin Love, I'm expecting to have a big game tonight. I won't be playing him if he has a big game. Uh, I won't be playing Thompson's price at 6,900 is way too high. Um, we'll be looking at X, Exum's kind of interesting at 3,700, especially if he gets – he's been getting some decent minutes. He had that huge game against Minnesota and then uh, got the illness. Uh, Kawhi's obviously going to be – I mean, there there are some decent high price options. I mean, obviously Harden, and then you got Giannis at eleven thousand, or was a twelve thousand two hundred on DraftKings, and then Doncic as well. We're going to talk about. So Leonard may fall by the wayside, especially uh, his price has really been jacked up after you know George being out for a couple of games. It seems like they haven't played like they played like four games together this entire year. <laughs> it's been unbelievable. They Feels never about right, yeah, yeah. They've never. I I don't. I I think it's been four straight weeks. I've done. On a, an earlier bird podcast where they have both one of them have been out which is pretty amazing so uh, not i don't love the price here i don't love the williams in the starting lineup with Kawhi. uh he started he started last game i believe yes uh harold harold at seven group seven k on DraftKings is not all that appealing he gets a slight boost without george but it's not as big as people anticipate um, I mean, I mean, Lou Williams did put up 39 points, but at 7,500 last game as a start against Denver, but it, you know, at 7,500, that's that's pretty pedestrian. You're not, you know, you're, that's not winning you a GPP. It's not a bad score, but it's not winning you a GPP. So I, I'd expect around 39, 40 for Lou. You can expect probably about 35 for Montrez, and uh, after that, maybe, but your Michael Green, that that could be an option that. Uh, a low price that not a lot of people have. His price has been pretty consistently on draft. He's 4,900, 5,000, 4,200. Now he's below that $4,000 threshold where he seems to, to play his best. Uh, he's for, if you want to look at against bad teams, he had a 30 point game against the Knicks. He had a 31 point game against the Pistons in a blowout. So uh, targeting him against the lower tier teams, maybe not a terrible strategy. So that, that's someone to keep in mind, Michael Green. Yeah, I like the I like the just targeting the Cleveland front court f- first mm-hmm. and foremost, but then getting maybe next level or, or second level of uh, somebody who could see 20, 24 minutes, see some garbage time run if this does blow out, but even more so still has at least a viable option to get 18 to 22 minutes with some upside against this Cleveland uh, front court as we were talking about. And uh, to point out here, don't see any changes in the line. Uh, minus 14 and a half. Yeah, no over under as of yet, but uh, would assume it's up there uh, a decent bit. Looking at uh, add more funds, which has NBA Wowie on it. Uh, nothing too significant with Paul George on, Paul George off for, for what you're looking at from a usage or from an assist percentage or anything like that. You see the typical jumps for Kawhi and Lou Williams of about two usage points. Same with the assist percentage for both. So it's not astronomically changing either of their upside. It is showing that George is not there and, and they're getting a little bit of a bump across those couple of categories that you would expect. So uh, nothing too outstanding there over there. And I will say to give them a, a plug, they're free. So check them out. Uh, what Matt's done, Matt Houchins and, and the team over there at AMF uh, with getting Wowie to actually function, first of all, but now also be very fast in functioning uh, has been awesome as the season has gone on. So appreciate the work they've done. They also now have uh, game flows as well uh, each and every day uh, for the NBA, which is cool to all have in one spot. But uh, let's uh, close this out uh, with uh, the final game of the night. You mentioned uh, Luka Doncic as somebody we've talked about. We'll talk about him right here. He is 12-6 up there as well, but has shown a penchant for gigantic games in his NBA career, continuing to do it this year. Porzingis currently listed as questionable with that knee that has been bothering him all year. He has a solid chance to play. That's according to the Dallas Morning News uh, in this Tuesday matchup with the Golden State Warriors. 
Now, that changes the landscape a good deal. I, I'm pretty sure Doncic goes from about 1.7 DK points per minute to 1.9 with Porzingis off the floor, which is a significant change in what he does. How do you like this one? Do you, do you go to a Doncic? Is he your favorite expensive player? Or do you see yourself maybe picking and choosing some other pieces in this matchup? Yeah, I do like this game. Doncic, so, so we have – the, Ma- the Warriors had a tough time against the Mavericks this year. So the first game we had Doncic to 10,400 on DraftKings. He went for 75 points in a 142-94 blowout. That's a real basketball score. And then the second game, he was 11,700. He went for 78 points in a 141-121 blowout. So are, are we going for triple sevens here for, for Doncic? Can, can he do it? I mean, that's that's a pretty – I don't, I don't know how many times we've seen someone go for 70 points against one opponent in the first half of the season. I mean, that would be – that's pretty phenomenal. I, I don't I know. Put a pet. Yeah. I, I just don't know. Like, yeah, I, I would yeah, agree with I, you. I think that, that is a very, one, specific thing. But two, It's very specific, but that's pretty cra- – I mean, that's pretty crazy. 70 points against one opponent in the first half of the season is, is like, wow. Um, I do – the 12,600. So basically, you're probably playing one of, if you're doing draft games, you're playing one of Harden, Doncic, and Giannis. Right. I, I, you're, you're definitely playing one of them. I think if I had to pick one, I would trend towards Harden just because the usage is going to be off the charts. He's only $400 more than Doncic. And the pace. I, I, I mean, I, yeah, like I think I agree with you. Yeah, I, I would, I'd expect Harden's. Ownership percentage would be much higher than Doncic's. Doncic, Doncic's, um, and he, he'll. I mean, Harden, hard is going to be. I expect him to be trending on 45, 50 percent owned in this contest, even even with the price. I think people are going to be too scared not to take it. That's interesting. I think yeah. I, I six game slate. We've seen some crazy ownership percentages on the year. That price yeah. point of 13k, I may, I think does knock off a couple of percentages from an ownership perspective, mm-hmm. but. I think you're right. It's Giannis versus Doncic versus Harden. And I would assume Giannis is faded because of the potential blowout. So I think he's your third highest owned. Yeah. And then Doncic, I know this is another potential blowout, but less so according to Vegas, at least as of right now, I think it's minus eight, minus eight and a half in favor of Dallas. Um, so, yeah, I could see Harden, Doncic, Giannis in that order from an ownership perspective. I don't know if Harden gets over 40% at 13K, though. You might be right. I and mean, we haven't seen him yet at 13K, so it's, right. it's hard. It's hard, it's hard With to Russ I, off the floor, gives him a bump, though. You, so you're right. Gives, he gives him a bump. I mean, after that game against Atlanta where he put up 81, it's, it's, it's going to come down to our, our people too afraid to bypass Harden. Because yeah, there's a lot of – yeah. So I, I in, in this game I really like D'Angelo Russell. Okay. So his D'Angelo Russell, I mean Damian Lee's out with the contract situation. I don't know what's going on there. Something with the contract. And Damian Lee's been one of their more productive players, which has really opened the door for Mari Spellman, who's now up at fifty five hundred. But Russell's seventy nine hundred. He's got a he's been six times value at this price, thirty seven percent of the time this year. So I think that's a really nice price point in a game that I expect to be somewhat closer of the of the high spread games. I think Golden State finally makes a push and keeps one of these games against Dallas close. You got Alec Burks, who I really like at 50, uh, 5,300, and he's got a six times value rate of 40% at 5,300. So he's going to get a heavy workload without Damian Lee. And then, and then Draymond, um, don't love Draymond just because he just hasn't been very good this year and hasn't played the heavy minutes we're expecting. And then Willie Cauley-Stein, 3,800. Uh, 58, he'll get the start. I think that's great value for Willie Cauley-Stein. He has been uh, a six times value player almost 50% of the time at that price. So those are three guys I'd be targeting. And um, I could, you can maybe make a little mini stack out of Golden State there. And then maybe look for one guy in Dallas that, uh, that could fill in, I don't know, maybe a, We'll see if Porzingis. I think Porzingis could be really interesting if he gets if he ends up going to seventy five hundred, and then maybe uh, maybe maybe Hardaway. I don't yeah. know. Hardaway. I to, yeah. Hardaway sub five K was somebody who jumped off again at me just simply because he has that upside to 
give you 30 real NBA points that can give you a, a big boost. Uh, Damian Lee, to your, to your point before, is dealing, he's a two way player. So he is trying to work out a long term contract with the Warriors, and that is causing him to sit these games out because he's a two way contract player. If he is not on the roster or signed by Wednesday, uh, he can be claimed by other teams. And so there's all these implications because of the G League and all that. So they're trying to sign him to this long-term deal. If he doesn't get signed, that'll be interesting. But it seems like he will be signed by Wednesday, which is the deadline. And then uh, he'll play Thursday, most yeah. likely. will most likely be out Tuesday night. He, so. he is also married to Steph Curry's sister. So there you go. That is a horse of a different color. I mean, that, yeah. that brings up a, a different situation. And, and Thanksgiving dinner may be a little bit more contested. Yeah, I think they want to keep him. Yeah. I'm, I'm imagining they want to keep him. There's Steph probably wants to keep him around. Or maybe he doesn't like his brother in law. I, I was going to say, like, some, some uh, in laws can be contentious, but probably better yeah. to keep an eye on him than uh, let yeah. him go off to Miami on his own uh, yeah. for, for the strip club night. But um, <laughs> I think there's some pieces here. I agree with you. And I, I do think uh, between Burks and, and Hardaway, I think you have some uh, guys who have just around 5k price points that have not slate breaking, but slate making sort of capabilities, 40, 45 draft game point sort of outings in them. If the ball bounces their way overall, you've made mention a couple of times here about how we're comparing a, a game. I like to play with uh, co-hosts is 10k and above five figure uh, players on DraftKings, thinking Kawhi Leonard, Giannis, Luca and Harden taking price into consideration. Of course, Who's your favorite play on this slate? Uh, who's the guy you think you're going to own most if you're multi, uh, multi-entering on Tuesday? Let, let's also put Trey Young in there if he plays. Sure. Yeah, that's fine. Trey Young, I, if, if Trey Young plays, he will be the guy I would be targeting most. Okay. Actually, I, th- I, I, don't, I think people are going to be off of him, and every time people doubt Trey Young, he has performed. I'm not worried about the injury. He is a. He still has a fifty percent five times value rated at this price, which is higher than anybody else does at their own price. So I will be looking at Trey Young as my core piece if he does play. If he doesn't play, I'd be going Harden. Yeah, you have Trey Young at a thirty three point nine percent usage percentage. Attempts on uh, three pointers are up there. Three point makes obviously assist percentage uh, is up near fifty percent. All the numbers that uh, you look at for James Harden. Uh, Trey Young's not exactly on the same plane as Harden, but the numbers are not too dissimilar. And mm-hmm. saving almost 3K and getting similar upside could make a ton of sense. Ownership will matter so much uh, as well. Six-game slate, you're going to see uh, some higher ownerships on some of these higher-priced guys. You're going to see 30, 40, even 50, maybe pushing 60% on somebody if injuries break a certain way. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you'll want to stay tuned to Osmo.com. If you're not yet a member, it's Osmo uh dot com you can check out our tweets osmo underscore com you can be sure to check out any of our giveaways as well uh we are constantly uh doing uh on each you know osmo nba osmo nfl now that that season is winding down but all of them constantly trying to get you in for free or or for a reduced price for a little while Uh, joey where can folks find you i know you are one of the people behind our social media, but where can they actually find yeah. Joey Corman on, on social media? You can, you can follow me at leave it to divac.com. That's L E A V E I T number two divac, like Vladi. Vladi. Vladi, my guy. All right. My Very guy. Well. Yep. So uh, that's where you can follow me. And uh, if you want uh, some divac, if you're, if you want some, I don't know how many people out there want, Vladi Divac. I mean, who uh, doesn't want Vladi Divac in their life? I mean, apparently a lot of people. I get I get a lot of mean comments about. Vladi. Like, <laughs> I hate Vladi. I'm but like, he's what? How he's, he's he still is he still in the Sacramento Kings? He's trying to be. Yeah. Okay. He's doing. He's doing, he's doing his best. He's doing his I best. Think. All right. Find yeah. uh, Joey over there. Find me at Dan Stratford, of course. Uh, tomorrow morning, you get Emac and you get. Chris Rendon, I'll put a question mark on that. I know there's been some moves on the podcast side of who's hosting when. So uh, check in for that uh, on Wednesday morning. Then it's uh, me and Adam Thursday, me and Lofi on Friday, uh, Adam and Emac on Saturday right here on the one and only DFS Earlybird presented by Osmo.com.